Hi guys, today I'm going to teach you how to use a for each loop. Um, there's loads of different looping techniques. For each though is especially good for looping through objects, i.e. worksheets in a workbook, um, files in a database, record sets, that kind of thing. For each is like the uh, standard, it's standardly used for looping through objects. You can also use the for and the do and the do until and the loop. Um, but the for each is the best way to do it. Okay, so I'm going to show you the approach that I've used. Okay, I wrote this before because it's quite lengthy code. Um, basically, says for each loop. So sub is the for each loop. What I've done is I've dimmed a worksheet as a current worksheet. So that's my version of worksheet. So I can set that worksheet property to anything using the object setter. That's used by using the set worksheet equals um, sheets um, sheet one. Yeah, and then that'll set my worksheet to sheet one. But because I want to loop through all the worksheets, I'm going to get rid of that. And then I've used the my string as string to initiate an input box. So the my string is the input box. What the, basically you input a sheet name, i.e. my string equals input box. Please enter sheet name to select. Then it says, if you basically put nothing and clicked OK, a message box will come up with it that says nothing entered. Let me show you that. Nothing entered. That's that part of the code. And then it breaks it down to the end if. So from that, that just initializes straight away and it recognizes if there's any entry in there or not. Otherwise, if there is an entry, it goes to the for each loop. This is the important part. So for each worksheet in application dot sheets or just sheets for short, because it knows that it's part of the application object group. So that's its parent, that sheet sheet application is the sheets parent um, and then basically I've used an if structure to find the worksheet that I'm looking for so if my worksheet dot name equals my string then my string is the actual input box so if the worksheet name equals what's been put in the input box then sheets my string dot select so it basically activates a current sheet and then another message box comes up saying sheets found and I've used a concatenation character there sheets found and active sheet dot name use the active cell and active sheet when looping because that will then tell you what the current active sheet is as opposed to specifying the worksheet it's down as a VBA information box and it's sheet found. You know, you, you've kind of picked up by now that I like to use message box if you've not lo you, um, seen any of my other videos. But you can also use the debug.print to print out whatever you want. And then that will print out in the what's known as the intermediate window there. But we're not going to use that for the time being. But I will show you how that's used later on. And then basically says this is just something that I've added on it won't work very well in all cases because it's in the, it's nested within the loop um, and range A1 could be any of the sheets so what will happen is if the worksheet name is not equal to my string so if it doesn't equal my string so the thing that you've entered in the input box is incorrect then I've used a with end with construct so this basically goes as follows with range a1 dot value equals unable to find sheet dot font dot bold equals true dot font dot size equals 24 dot font dot color index is 26 so if I was to write that without the with and with constructs it would be range a1 dot value equals unable to find sheet next line range a1 dot font dot bold equals true next line range a1 dot font dot size equals 24 next line range a1 dot font dot color index equals 26 
So instead of writing four lengthy lines of code like that, I've written, I've done it, I've contained it in part of with and with construct. Then from here to here, I've cut off the if statement, so that's all contained within that block, all of that. And then the for each statement starts here and terminates there. The sub, which starts up here, then terminates down there. So let me just show you what this is doing. Okay, so we press play. So, oh, just let me get rid of that. That's not good straight away, is it? Let's get rid of that. Okay. It's one that oh, it's because I was testing it out earlier before I showed you, before I put it online for all to see. So, play. So, please enter sheet name to select. So, I want to select sheet two, and it's found it. Basic within that loop, it looks at all the sheets within that workbook and finds sheet two. Let's add some more sheets. That shouldn't come up. That there's something wrong with that back end bit. Well, we'll get rid of that. Yeah, I know why. But that's how you use a with else with and else if and a with constructs. But I'm going to code that out because it's not actually working as I expected it to work. This happens sometimes when you're programming, but it's still good enough for demonstration purposes. Next, is that four. Where's the four? Where's the four? Ah, there we need to end if there. We need to end if there. That's what we need. Right. So please enter sheet name to select. So I want sheet two. Sheet found, sheet two. And if you can see, sheet two has been selected. So, say I didn't enter anything in there. I've not put anything, so nothing's been entered. That's detected in that string, because it says if my string equals empty, then message box, nothing entered, VB critical. You be critical there a lot. Sorry, going a bit quick. Um, else, um, let's just fire that one up again. Enter sheets four. Sheet four found. So if I added more sheets, insert worksheet, insert worksheet insert worksheet now this would have to loop through one two three eight sheets before it finds what it's looking for but in a for each loop it can do that very easily and it very quickly and it's not very processor in intensive basically so let's do that again i want to find sheet eight this time sheet found sheet eight okay so that's how you basically use a for each loop. I'll publish this code into the comments section in the description field, sorry. Um, and if you want, you can have an example work, uh, an example of this worksheet as well. I need to work on the, the actual end part of the else if bit because I want it to actually reject it if basically you enter a string that's invalid, i.e. If I run this now and I enter Gary, it's still going to terminate, but it won't select anything. As you can see, sheet 8 is still selected, which is not a big problem, but I want to alert the user to the fact that that's been selected. So if you want the code, put in the comment line and I can um, send you the file through. I keep copies of all my worksheets anyway, and every project I've ever done is on a drive somewhere or some other... Yeah, I keep everything basically is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> okay, so that's a way you can do it. That's a very uh, convoluted way. If you just wanted to know what each worksheet was called, we can get rid of a whole lot of this code. Let me go, let me comment out of that. Comment out of that, and that, and that, and that, and that. Um, and that, and that, and that, and that, and most of it actually. So all I want is 
a message box to come up with a current worksheet name. Yeah? For each worksheet in application.sheets, message box, the current worksheet is, end your quotation, concatenation, worksheet.name. Next, to loop it. So it goes through each one, giving you a message box of each, and then it, it terminates. So, sheet one, sheet two, sheet three, sheet eight, sheet seven, sheet six, sheet five, sheet four. If we reordered these, there is a way you can actually sort the ordering out. So if I want sheet four there, sheet five here, sheet six there, that will now do it in order. Watch. The current worksheet is sheet one. The current worksheet is sheet two, sheet three, sheet four, sheet five, sheet six, sheet seven, sheet eight. And you can loop through absolutely anything, anything in a worksheet with a for each loop. A for loop is useful for looping through cells. You can do like um, calculations and uh, count. You can count downwards in cells. I'll show you how to do that in other videos that I load on subsequent to these. But yeah, that's that's one way you can use the for for each loop to work, uh, loop through your worksheets. So hope for that. Hopefully that's been informative for you. Uh, and I'll load videos on in the future in relation to other looping practices. Okay, cheers guys, thanks a lot.